Hey everybody, Stu Smith here and Jeff Nichols with another tactical fitness report and today we are going to talk about some of the changes in the military fitness world, especially the fitness testing world. Um, like you, you will, if you're paying attention, you probably know Navy has gotten rid of crunches and turned it into plank poses. I think the Marine Corps is doing the same thing. I think to max a Marine Corps plank, you got to do it like for four and a half minutes. Yeah. Um, that's some, some, you know, future, you know, it, it's coming. And then the army just created a whole new, um, challenging fitness test, which I happen to like. I think if you're going yeah. to be a tactical athlete, you should test all the elements of fitness strength, power, speed, agility. You know. Yeah, it's kind of like the Army's version of the firefighter's CPAT. Yeah, it's really cool. In, in a way, it's, yeah. yeah it's I think really it, cool. They've they yeah. done a good job. You know, compared to a push-up, sit-up, two-mile run, you know, I mean, you're going to be muscle stamina and endurance. That's it. Yeah. You miss out on 75% of the other elements that you really need to focus on because you got to be good at all of these things. Sure. That's what tactical fitness is. So let's talk about the big change. The big change is for the – Navy, it's crunches going to plank pose. For the Army, it's sit-ups going to a hanging knee up, which that's a hard one. You try to just hang on a pull-up bar for two minutes. Good luck. You know, yeah. that, that's a double one. Now you're going to bring your knees up to your elbows. You know, how many times can you do that? You know, yeah. those are very advanced abdominal core. I mean, when we say core, I mean everything from – the below my hips all the way up to my neck, yep. you know, yeah, like nipple nipples, the knees. Yeah. You know, yeah. it is, it is everything, you know, um, I know you have a unique, uh, you know, mindset on how, how, uh, the core actually works, you know, it not, not actually works, but you, you know, you yeah. Know, just, I, just my choice of being particular about using the word core and answer. Yes. Like, oh, yeah, like, I get it. I'm, I'm particular about it just cause that's how my brain is wired. No, I mean, it, but it makes sense, though. I mean, let, let's discuss why that is because, you know, let's let's compare the sit-up to the plank pose, right? Yeah, this is why because I, I say, you know, if you're standing on a range with a pistol and your instructor goes, hey, shoot the target, you're like, why are we – where? Like, what? I, I just want to be specific to people because yeah. I'm saying the core, yeah, okay. So when it comes to the sit-up and the core and those sort of things, is it's both sides, right? It's, it's – when someone to me says core – my head goes, well, that is like 15 to 20 different muscles Absolutely. and 65 different bones. It's a right? system. So, yeah, it's a total system. So yeah. when I'm saying, hey, your core is weak, you may mislead somebody because they may have a weak posterior chain lumbar, but their abs and hip flexors are not weak because they've been doing a lot of sit-ups. So I can't say the core is weak or this. I, I want to say specifically within that, structure of the core yep. what exactly the efficiency is um, and then when I'm describing an exercise I don't want to say well that just works the core because like a sit-up primarily will work the hip flexors right so I so that's why I'm specific about the things I say um, and I don't mean and not to begrudge anyone this general because it's oh. it is more conversational to just say hey core but yeah so going under the going just my 30,000 foot view on this is I, I don't have any negativity on the changing of the exercises my negativity on and this is only a little piece of negativity that i have the rest is very positive and change the only thread of negativity i have on this is this okay so the changes that have been made um we don't really exactly know potentially what the reason or the reasons why there was a change but to me there was a shortfall prior to teaching the proper way to do sit up protocols and training and in transitioning into training for the PT tests, right? Annually or biannually, whatever it is. Well, the shortfall was the teaching, not the sit up. So now we introduced a new exercise. Well, we've got to, you, you can't just, yeah, the core looks, it's, it's, it's isometric. The guy's not moving. How difficult could it be? Well, there's some real particulars that need to be taught within, in my opinion, within the plank, that give it real value, okay? And so that's my concern. It's like we're going to switch to the plank, and the military is, but is it going to be taught properly, right? I hope that it is, and that's my only concern. Yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, if here's the problem with the Navy, and I'm not sure if the Army has similar issues. Um, they seem to be a little more physically oriented than, you know, 
the average Navy guy, you know, that's, you know, on a ship doing shipboard stuff, you know, or doing other jobs. Um, it's typically is, you know, there's not necessarily a command PT structure, you know, in the regular Navy fleet, right? So they, they don't go out and do things as a, as a command, like at the team, you know, the first two hours of your day, we were working out, you yeah. know, that was just the, that was just the culture, you know? So what can happen in, in the, in the regular Navy world is you don't exercise for five and a half months, right? And then you got two weeks before your next PT test. I can't tell you how many emails I get from, hey, I got my PT test in two weeks. Can you help? Yeah, give me you know, some with, tips. Yeah, yeah. Give me get some it started tips. four months ago. That's yeah, yeah tip number one. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that, and they're just trying to cram study for this fitness test. And that's when people hurt their backs doing sit-ups. Yeah. You know, I still do sit-ups. I like sit-ups. Yeah. You know, I do sit-ups and crunches and I do, you know, but, but, yeah. <laughs> but, if you, but, but if you read, I do a lot of plank poses too. I do a lot of squats Same. I do a lot of deadlifts, right? So I'm working everything. But if you read like Stuart McGill, you know, great back doctor, you know, he is absolutely, you know, hates the sit-up, right? Okay. And then you read other studies that contradict some of that, right? So there's some, there's some misinformation out there that, you know, scientifically proven your back doesn't necessarily have a set number of sit-ups that it can do. I mean, I guess yeah. we all do. I mean, we're, we're limited to something, right? I mean, if you look yeah. at a pro baseball player throwing you, you bet. I mean, 90 to 95 miles an hour, there's a limited amount of time he can do that and do yeah. it without pain. Yeah. I think that the big, the, one of the big training misconceptions about, again, not, not to beat the sit up up, but just to give you a highlight on where my brain is at is that, okay, bicep curl with a weight that is pretty light, but you know, if you do it a bunch of times, you're going to get tired from that light to moderate weight. You do a bunch of reps with bicep. If you've seen through my programming and the hypertrophy guys, the biceps get bigger yes. <laughs> all the time. Okay doing that many sit-ups, right, in hopes of increasing your sit-ups will, to, to some degree, increase, improve your sit-ups to some degree. But the fitness community doesn't do sit-ups. The reason why the fitness community doesn't do sit-ups, I'm talking like the stage fitness. Sure. Is because doing that, doing equal number sit-up type, crunch type reps, with they're doing with their biceps and legs and shoulders, the abs will grow just like any other body part. The abdominals will get thicker and thicker and thicker and you get distended. Yeah. Now, that's not a look that people typically want, but it's also not a position that people typically want because it shortens the psoas and iliacus so much because of the, because of the bracing. Now, all that is negated, in my opinion, by just getting to full extension as much as you can too, right? Absolutely. And you can do as many. See, that's the problem is that the number of, sit-ups that we do to shorten this muscle group right here, the psoas iliacus, you don't get that many extension past 180. Because if I'm at 180, I'm doing a lot of sit-ups to my front side, but I'm not getting a lot of extension past here, you know, because there's not there isn't a lot of exercises that get you past 180, right? Kind of momentarily on a dynamic pull, right? right. You might get it on a kipping type pull-up, but then this dynamic. Yeah. So my thing is, is we're just not working the sides equally. The sit-ups tend to shorten the shoulders forward, shorten the iliacs and so as. It makes running more difficult, so on and so forth. Not because of the exercise is bad. Right. But kind of as Stu and I are saying, it's that it's just not equal. The consumption and use of the exercise, especially for that acute two weeks out, where now you just really shorten that rib cage. The, this vertebrae want to come out the back. And now we're running and pounding. And that's just not good for those short times. Again, it's there's nothing wrong with this sit-up. There's nothing wrong with any exercise, in my opinion, or program. It's just the execution that we want. Like, we just want people to be mindful of it. It's like the plank is great. The plank is awesome. I just want to make sure the plank is being taught and used properly. Right. And I mean, I look at it this way. Every time I do some kind of abdominal exercise, sit-ups, crunches, you know, whatever, right? I will, how many reps I do, I tend to do that many seconds in plank pose yes. at, the, at the end of the workout. So my cool down balances out that front side work, you know, um, just, you know, just if I just am doing calisthenics that day. Now I do yeah. some other PT reset exercises like 
like hand release push-ups, um, reverse push-ups, like just lifting my hands off the ground. Do yeah. the old, remember the old arm hauler? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That That's a classic, man. It's like a <laughs> yeah. horizontal jumping jack and your hands are like three inches off the ground the whole time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Up here. Um, I mean, it starts from the cervic, cervical part of your spine all the way down. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, little swimmers. So lay on your belly instead of doing flutter kicks on your back, doing normal flutter kicks, lay on your belly and do flutter kicks with your knees up off the ground. And it's going to flex all this backside right here. Like the Superman's. You bet. Yeah. Just doing oh, yeah. Flutter kick. It's going to flex all this backside activity. Yeah. Um, and really help you have a truly balanced core. You know, when we yeah. say core, there's way more to it than just the abs. Yeah, nipples just, to yeah. knees, front, back, sideways, inside, everything. I mean, we're not, we're not, core is not the abs. Core is all the cousins, the nephews, and the friends of the abs, right? Yeah. That's what it is, the whole family tree, okay? Yeah. So, again, what we're trying to get you guys to think about is that it's just execution, really, at the end of the day. It's really that simple, and it's it, it, is the change good or bad? Um, it depends, right? <laughs> that, that answer well, I think, depends. I think this. I think for what the Navy is, you look at the fleet in general, I would much rather see them doing plank poses than sit-ups. I agree. Because they don't know how to do sit-ups. They're not necessarily prepared to do sit-ups yet. So it, I don't think it should be part of their exercise programming yet. Now, because yeah, that's what Stu and I were talking about. Yeah, yeah that the advanced, yeah, the advanced groups within the Navy, your SEALs, your SWIC, your EOD, you know, your rescue swimmers, they're still going to have a PST, and I guarantee you that's going to be swim, pull up, push up, sit ups, mile and a half run, right? I mean, that may change one day. I'm sure everything changes, but. Um, that one will probably hold true for a while, even though the regular Navy does plank poses. So right. you're going to have to do both, Yeah, which is good. Right. That, that's, they are better done paired together yes. than they will ever be by themselves. Yeah. So that, and that, and that's, that's, and again, understand that like, and I got to check myself a little bit is this PST is, is a test of standard. The PST is not a training program. So that's something we also got to keep in mind is like, okay, what is it testing now that it wasn't testing before? You know, I mean, that's the real question I ask. Like, okay, yeah. what were the sit-ups testing? If you look up what assist assist sit-up test, it tested primarily X, Y, and Z. These body parts, these movements, whatever, strength endurance. Okay? Yes. Now we're going to a plank. Is it testing something different? Is it testing the same? And so that's a question is like, is it a one in one? Is it a one for one replacement? No, but, but I think what it's asking though really is like what we want to have before we have a mobile spine. Well, we always want to have a mobile spine, but we want to have a stable spine. So then it moves better, right? It's more mobile. It's if it's stable. And that is what the plank to me teaches. It teaches to to maintain, achieve, and feel like what a stable spine feels like, yep. then the sit-up is taking that stable spine and moving it, you know, moving that trunk. So there's a real progression. That's why I think Stu is right. Both of them are good. I think sit-ups by themselves are, are less useful. Yeah. And planks by themselves are less useful than doing them both. So I think them, they complement each other well, actually. Yeah. yeah, that's actually a good point. Um, you know, something too to consider, uh, whenever we do talk about, um, you know, the plank pose and the sit up, you know, combination is the, uh, the actual plank pose itself is going to be, you know, an isometric flex, right? Which if you get good at that plank pose, which if you're not good at it, you probably should consider maybe some yoga courses, right? Kind of help yourself progress into that type of stability yep. um, and then I bet you we will see better push-ups out of people as well you will I mean that if the if if the plank is being taught properly you you want you you will probably see not only from the plank of an improvement in your push-ups it's very likely you're gonna see improvement in your runtime 
Yeah. Because now you have a you have a stable spine if you're doing your 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 proper plank from you know especially the really really good lat engagement you're going to see your run improve because you're going to stabilize the spine a lot better than you were unable to stabilize the spine in a sit up and you're tiring out your hip flexors when you're doing the sit up so your legs are going to be a little wobbly when you first start running yep. you know, so yeah you probably will see better run times i would i would imagine if the plank is done properly you're going to see better run times nice it's my guess i like so. it so you know, it's a I'm change. looking forward to the change. I am. I, I think that I, I think that there's less risk. Of, now, here's the thing is like, is there less risk of injury with this compared to the sit-up? I think there probably certainly is. And this might be one of those trade-offs where you're not really trading a lesser evil, though, because the plank in of itself is still giving good value if it's done right. Yeah. So that's where it's like, if we're getting rid of the sit-up and it's done poorly – and we're just replacing with a poorly executed la uh, uh, plank. We really, have, really haven't gained much. Well, let's let's have, think about what are what are potential injuries that can be caused from planking. I think the big problem is going to be neck injuries because people are going to be planked in a shrug. Yeah, right? that's the big Shoulders, problem. Neck right? and shoulder, I would agree. Shoulder yep. and lat issues, especially if you already have bad internal rotation, which most people do. You yeah. put someone in a plank, and their thumbs are in right? Elbows are out. That's a problem. So that's where I'm going to see. I think you're going to have um, people that are right-handed in a plank. You're going to see a lot of left shoulder injuries. People that are left-handed, you're going to people see with people if done improperly. No, no. Right. If, if the plank is done properly, not only will you improve shoulder health dramatically because of the lat engagement, that's why we're saying you're going to improve your push-up and you're mostly going to improve your, your run time because so much of your power production of your upper body during a run comes from your lat being engaged posteriorly, right? When the elbow gets thrown back. So I think that if done properly, you're going to see real benefits or you're going to screw some people's shoulders and lower back yeah. up even more. Well, you, you, like I said, if you do it properly, like you said, you're going to definitely have a stronger lumbar section, right? Which, you know, hundred percent, you know, and thoracic of, and that's the beauty. Yeah. You, you know, you're going to, you're not going to have the lumbar and thoracic play together very well, and especially not the cervical. Yeah. You know, sit up, man. No. You, that's the plank is so good to get the cervical, the thoracic. So cervical neck, thoracic chest area. We'll just call it that. Yeah. You know, rib and chest, and lumbar is waist. In a plank, those three are so obviously will play well together. It's much easier movement pattern exercise to correct too, and so that's why I've. I think Stu and I both are hopeful of that as well. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, the Navy just kind of went backwards with this one. You know, they should have started with the plank a long time ago, right? And then they advance into their, um, you know, their sit-ups or crunches, yeah. um, you know, later on. And, and maybe that's how it's going to be set up now with the regular Navy doing planks. You know, you're going to do your planks at boot camp. And then you decide you want to do one of the special ops programs, special programs, they will probably still be doing sit-ups, you know, in there. I well. would venture yeah. to guess. I would agree. I think, you know, having that, that sort of, they've kind of created a natural progression that kind of makes sense, actually. I agree. Agree. So there we go. We solved that problem. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about it. At least. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And I understand too, folks, like, Stu and I are not – We it's not missed by us that two guys are sitting on their couch, basically are sitting in their offices at home talking about 300,000 Navy people that are going to have to do – like, we get it, man. Like, I'm super glad, and I'm sure Stu is, that he, Stu is probably real thrilled he's not the CNO. Oh, like, yeah. No tough thing. decision. No tough way. Decision. Like, there's, yeah. there's no decision that the CNO is going to make in terms of the PT – that's going to make everyone happy. It's just that I know that. And so it's like, I came out kind of with both barrels saying it was kind of dumb. And it's more of like, well, I just kind of perceive that it, it, the, the teaching, the, the teaching of it is going to be deficient as well, but prove me wrong, please. Yes. Maybe. Prove me now wrong. Let's learn how to do planks. Right. And, um, but you know what? There is, there is an old saying that I used to laugh at is a uh, uh, bitch and sailors, a happy sailor. 
<laughs> so they're gonna they're gonna find something to bitch about. That's true. Yeah. So true. All right. So hey guys, check out Jeff's website because he has some really cool seminars coming up in Virginia Beach uh, in July and August, and I'll be going down there to help him out with those as well. So yes. just just double check a little bit about it, and uh, you know we'll, we'll talk about them more in the uh, upcoming podcasts. You bet. Yeah. So we'll drop the dates on our social media. Um, yeah, we'll have a three day swim clinic here in Virginia beach at Virginia Wesleyan uh, coming up. We'll post those dates. Stu and I, and some other fantastic teachers will be here in August, um, doing a three day seminar, not it, it'll, it'll be resistance stuff, PSD training and resiliency mindset, all that stuff. Um, and so, yeah, look forward to it and, uh, yeah, hope to see some of y'all. Okay. Cool, Jeff. Well, thanks a lot, and uh, we will chat again later. You betcha. Appreciate it.